with his bodyguards. This outrage was the final straw. It caused a revolution against the Mafia, led by the people of Palermo. After the killing of Paolo Borsellino, the reaction of people, of population in Palermo was uh, enormous. The women, the children, the people reacted, uh, just uh, crying, basta, no more, enough is enough. Enough was enough. Thousands poured onto the streets of Palermo in a wave of anger unprecedented in Sicilian history. Everyone sensed the Mafia's next target was Mayor Leoluca Orlando, elected to office pledging to rid Palermo of the Mafia. When he appeared in public, women and children threw a protective cordon around him, daring the Mafia to kill them to get to the Mayor. They send a clear message. The message was that I was not alone. The message was that the Mafia can kill a man. The Mafia can kill 10 men. But the Mafia cannot kill thousands and thousands of women and children. It was the beginning of the hand. People power had beaten back the Mafia. The government flooded Sicily with thousands of troops, determined to crack down hard on the Mafia. In 1993, Italian police scooped the biggest prize of all. Following a tip-off, Toto Ruina was finally arrested. Salvatore Irina was captured in Palermo by the Carabinieri this morning. Toto Rina is ours. Astonishingly, Riina had been living in the middle of Palermo, undetected by the police for over 20 years. When Riina was paraded in public, Italians were shocked. This inoffensive-looking, peasant-like character was responsible for the brutal slaying of Falcone and Borsellino, along with hundreds of others. At his trial, Riina painted himself as a poor old man who knew nothing about the Mafia. This flimsy defense was rejected. Riina was sentenced to life imprisonment to be served away from Sicily in a jail on the Italian mainland. On both sides of the Atlantic, the day of the Godfather seemed over. John Gotti died of cancer in prison in 2002, 10 years into his life sentence. With Gotti's death, an era ended. By publicly flaunting the fact that he was boss of bosses, he ensured that law enforcement agencies would leave no stone unturned to finally smash the mob. The future is pretty grim for the mob if the FBI and other federal agencies keeps the pressure on to go after these guys. The biggest mistake we could make is declare that the war and the mob is over with, we've won, and go off to do other things. These people are very resilient. Five years they could regroup, reorganize. They'll never be as effective what they were 30 years ago, but they'll still be a viable criminal force. In the US, the mob are moving with the times. They're involved in internet fraud, sex phone lines, and stock exchange scams. But they are no longer the power they were. Nor will the FBI let Russian, Chinese, or other criminals dominate their neighborhoods in the way Italian gangsters once controlled theirs.
In Sicily, they are also keeping up the pressure. Yet in these hills, even with Riina in prison, the Mafia is still there. Invisible, but deadly. Today, there are new leaders. They are also from the Mafia stronghold of Corleone. They have turned their backs on the self-defeating tactics of Toto Riina. No longer do they assassinate public officials. Like the leaders of old, they prefer to pull the strings from the shadows. Forse vivemmo tutti quanti una vera grande illusione che I think we were all a bit deluded. Maybe we were just kidding ourselves that we could destroy the Mafia with just four moves on a chessboard. In the US, the mob is finally in retreat. But in Sicily, it is rising from the ashes, adapting itself to the times, changing tactics to ensure that its power remains as unshakable today as it ever was.